singing and shouting I like the old time way I like the old time preaching and praying I like the old time way I like the old time preaching and praying I like the old time way Welcome you this morning to the Old Time Way Morning Program. Coming to you from Holy Cross Worship Center. Hallelujah. Here in Del Valley, Texas. Hallelujah. I like the old time way of preaching and praying and singing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. the Lord. Call your friends. Call your neighbors. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Call your loved ones. Tell them to join Would us this morning for the Old Time Way morning program. Mom. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This train is a clean train. This train. Set this train is a clean train. This train. This train is a clean train. This train is a clean train. Everybody ride in my Jesus' name. Talking about this train. I tell you, this train is a holy train. This train is a holy train. This train. This train. Turn the volume up. Let everybody in the house hear, hallelujah, that this train is a holy train. This train don't care no liars. This train. This train don't carry no liars. This train don't care no liars. No bad riders, no bad sliders. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. The only way to ride, you got to be holy. Hallelujah! The only way to ride it is you got to be holy. This train don't care no gamblers. This train. This train don't care no gamblers. This train. This train don't carry no gamblers. No night ramblers. No talking about this train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. Hallelujah. This train is bound for glory. Only we ride to got to be holy. Talking about this train. This train, clean train. This train. This train. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Turn the volume up. Turn the volume up. Hallelujah. Let everybody in the house, let everybody in the office, everybody in the car, let them hear, hallelujah, that this train is bound for glory, this train. Hallelujah! 
train don't carry no liars. Hallelujah. Call your friends, call your neighbors, tell them to join us this morning for the Old Time Way Morning Program. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Come on, say, I'm on this train. I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm so right. Oh, somebody ought to get happy this morning. Come on, let's get our praise on this morning, hallelujah. Everybody turn the volume up. Share, hallelujah, the program on your Facebook and your YouTube. And let's get started, hallelujah, with this train. is bound for glory, this train. Take this train to the queen train. Everybody ride in with Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, talking about this train. I tell you, this train is a holy train. This train is a holy train. It's a holy train, this train. I said this train is a holy train. Only way you ride, you got to be the same. Talking about this train. So this train don't care no liars, this train. Hallelujah. This train don't care no liars, this train. Somebody ought to join me this morning and just get your praise on. Black bottles, no black slider. Talking about this train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. The only way you ride, you got to be home. Hallelujah. Can no gamble. This train. This train don't have no gamble. This train. No night ramblers. Oh, oh, talking about this train. Mm, this train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. I'm calling this train. I'm telling you, this train is bound for glory. Only we ride, you got to be holding. Oh, talking about this train. Hallelujah. Mm, this train, clean train. This train. This train. Turn the volume up, hallelujah, let everybody hear. Everybody ride, you got to be the same. Talking about this train. Yes, we're talking about this train. And this train is bound for glory, this train. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Just worship him this morning. This train. Hold it, train. I said, this train don't care no liars. Said, this train don't care no liars. This train, this train don't care no liars. No backbiters, no backsliders. Oh, oh, talking about Hallelujah. volume up, lower the windows in the car, hallelujah, and let everybody hear that this train is bound for glory, this train. What a way, what a way to start off the morning, hallelujah. This train is bound for glory, this train. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I'm on this train. I'm on my way to hell. And I'm so right. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. You can feel the presence of they the Lord in this place this to morning. His hand. Oh, to his hand. Come on and help me sing it quiet. morning. Why don't you hold on to God's unchanging hand? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, you know it. Trust in Him. 
So every Hold year on to dream. God's unchanging what hand. So whatsoever is me bring. Hallelujah. What a joy. What a joy it is to be with you on this just beautiful, beautiful Tuesday morning. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank God for his grace and his mercy, his unconditional love and everything that he has done for us. We want to pray. We want to pray. Before we go any further, we're going to pray. And whatever problem, whatever need, whatever may be going on in your life, There's no better advice that I can give you than to lay it at the foot of the cross and then just hold on uh, to God's unchanging hand. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he wants to bless you. He wants the best for you. He said, I've come that you may have life and have life in abundance. He just wants to give you everything, everything, hallelujah. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. But you've got to have faith. You've got to have faith. And hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence this morning. We give you all the honor and the glory. We just want to thank you, Father, for life, health, and strength. For the warm blood that runs through our veins. We thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. And your unconditional love that even while we were yet sinners that you send your son to die on that cross just for us father I just cannot find the adequate words to say thank you and for the lack of another word father I just want to say thank you Thank you for taking me out of that miry clay. Taking me out of that sinful life. And changing me. Transforming me. And making me into a new person. I want to thank you, Father, for falling in love with you. And that all through these years, I fall more in love with you every day. Trouble comes. Problems come. This world is full of evil. Every day we hear of a mass shooting. We hear of some evil thing. But through all of that, I can sit here this morning and say that I fall in love with you more every day. And that you are my peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. I found out a long time ago from my own personal experiences that you are the great I am. When I have found myself in dire need, 
lonely, frustrated, angry. You have been my comforter. When I have found myself broken, when I have contemplated suicide, you've been my hope. You've been my friend. When I have been sick, at the edge of death, you have been my doctor. When I felt myself falling, you are my rock. You have been the great I am to me. And now with that assurance, we come humbly with a humble heart and a contrite spirit asking for these, your children. This morning we stand in the gap Father, there's evil all around us. All around us, Father. All we hear is bad news. But we stand on your word, Father. And your word says, that you would never leave us and forsake us. And even when evil is all around, you are right there in the midst of it. Even in the bad times, you are right there. Because you said, I'll never leave you. And that's a promise, Father, that you have always kept. Because you are a promise keeper. And your word is true. Your word never fails. Father, this morning I ask that you hear the humble cry of your children. Many, many come to you this morning with a broken heart. Many in their childhood, in their adolescent years, they were abused molested, mistreated. And now as the years have gone by, that memory, those scars, and those broken hearts still remain. No matter what they do, no matter what happens in their lives, no matter how good things are, that dark shadow is always around. In the back of their memory, they will hear a sound or smell an odor. And it will trigger those memories. Father, today, we stand in the gap for them. We stand in the gap for that individual that has been fighting a physical illness, who has been struggling with cancer, whose body is raging in pain. And even, even when they take pain medication, their bodies continue to deteriorate and their bodies continue in pain. We ask you for that individual that is fighting diabetes 
who is on the dialysis machine, who goes three times a week to get their blood cleansed, and their bodies are tired, their veins are tired. We ask you for that individual, Father, that is praying that that little mother whose son or daughter is in those prison jail cells, that every time they remember, every time they go to visit, their hearts break because they have to leave their child behind bars. We ask you, Father, for that child that the devil has fooled and lied to and now are facing the consequences of their actions. They're incarcerated stuck in those cells. They put on the facade of, I'm tough. Everything is all right. But in the middle of the night, they hug their pillows and they cry into them. And they say in their own way, why didn't I listen? Look at where I am. Father, we stand in the gap for that young man and that young woman that is out on the streets, hooked on heroin, cocaine, Crack, meth, whose arms and veins are all messed up because of the abuse of the drug. Their mind, their minds are messed up, tortured. They're out on the streets, sleeping on the sidewalks. And there's a little mother praying for that son or daughter. As they commit crimes and do all kinds of things to try to support that habit. Father, we stand in the gap for them. We stand in the gap for that individual who is at the brink of death right now. Who maybe is in a hospital or in an alley. Their lives being drained from them. And Father, this morning, as their life begins to to leave their bodies we stand in the gap for them father just like you did for that thief that was on the cross with your son Jesus and how you saved him at that very last minute father we ask you to save that individual we ask you to help him father Father, this morning, somebody that is listening to the sound of my voice needs your help. They've come to the edge of the cliff and they don't know what to do anymore. Father, today, we stand here in the gap for them. They may not know how to pray. They may not know what to say. 
But we come to you, Father, united as your children. We come to you this morning, Father. And we say, help us. Extend your hand of grace and mercy and touch. Heal and deliver. Break every chain. Remove every yoke. Take the blinders from their eyes that they may be able to see Jesus this morning. Father, you said you are our very present help in time of trouble. And Father, these children are in trouble and they need your help. And Father, it is with the authority that you've given us that we rebuke that spirit of addiction. We come against every vice. We come against every principality, every foul spirit. We come against every demon. We come against every sickness. We come against every foul spirit. In the name of Jesus. And in that precious name, they have to flee. Because you said, to him that believe, all things are possible. And we're believing, Father. We're believing you're going to save our children. You're going to save our grandchildren. You're going to bless us until our third, fourth, and fifth generations. We come against every family curse every generational curse and father set the captive free father we just thank you because you are the god of abraham isaac and jacob and and you are our god and you are my friend i call you my friend thank you father for listening to the cry of your children and we will be very careful to give you all of the honor and all of the glory in the great and precious name of Jesus praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah well good morning and God bless you, hallelujah. We certainly are very happy to be here with you on this beautiful Tuesday morning, hallelujah. And before we go any further, I would like everyone, everyone that is listening through YouTube, through Facebook, I want you to join me in wishing, uh, hallelujah, Pastor Cookie Hernandez from God's House of Restoration and Praise in Temple, Texas, hallelujah, a great big happy birthday hallelujah today is her birthday hallelujah and may the lord bless you pastor may the lord keep you hallelujah and may he give you the desires of your heart hallelujah what he promised he is more than able to keep hallelujah so everybody this morning help me hallelujah wish Hallelujah, uh, Pastor Cookie, a great big happy birthday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah, we certainly again are very happy to be here and we are going to go into the word of the Lord. Now, we want to invite you to invite you to the revival. We are in revival and we want to invite you for this weekend hallelujah uh friday the 21st and saturday the 22nd at 7 p.m here under the great big gospel tent come and join us at 7 p.m hallelujah and then on the 23rd come and join us at 10 a.m hallelujah for our sunday morning praise and worship service and then we come right back at five o'clock Five o'clock in the afternoon, hallelujah, to continue the revival. And let me tell you, God is doing some great and mighty things. What a time. What a time we had this past weekend, hallelujah. And we are expecting even greater things, hallelujah, to come. So you owe it to yourself. 
you owe it to yourself to make some arrangements, stop some things, and be with us this coming weekend. Hallelujah. Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Hallelujah. And then on uh, uh, Sunday morning, the 23rd at 10 a.m. Hallelujah. For our Sunday morning praise and worship service. And then at 5 o'clock, the revival continues. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a glorious, glorious day. Now, we're going to go into the word of the Lord. And I want everybody, get your Bible. Get your Bible, get your paper, get your pencil. And let's get ready to study the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to be coming out of the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16, uh, verses 1 through 13. Again, we are going to be coming out of the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And we are going to be discussing, we are going to use as our topic, what God has for you, it is for you. Let me say that again. What God has for you, for you it is for you no devil no demon in hell can take away what God has predestined what God has planned for you he said I've got a plan for you a plan to bless you not to curse you and I'm here to hallelujah to file notice on Satan himself that what God has for you, listen to me, my brother and sister, you that are listening. I want to, hallelujah, serve notice to the devil today, to that demon that has been circling you, to that demon that has been tormenting you and bothering you, that demon that, hallelujah, perhaps has not allowed, hallelujah, God's plans to come together. Let me serve notice on him this morning that what God has for you, hallelujah, is for you. It is for you. No matter what, no matter what you are going through in this life, I just want you to know one thing. That what God has for you, it is for you. You may not have everything that you desire or that you need right now. But just know and believe this one thing. What God has for you, it is for you. It doesn't matter if you are young or old, black or white, rich or poor educated or not just know and believe this one thing that what god has for you it is for you it doesn't matter matter if you are single married divorced or a widow what god has for you it is for you and whatever god has for you Listen to me. Listen closely. Whatever God has for you, you don't lie to get it. You don't have to steal to get it. You don't have to cheat anyone to get it. You don't have to be political to get it. You don't have to deceive anyone to get it. You don't have to argue or fight anyone to get it because what God has for you is for you. You don't have to go look for it. You don't have to go look for that husband or for that wife. You don't have to go look for that money. You don't have to do anything illegal. You don't have to do anything than believe in God. What God has for you is for you. Instead of you battling someone to get what God has for you, you need to pray and let the Lord fight your battles. 
and let him bring it to pass. Let him do what he does best. Hallelujah. Let him bless you. If he has promised it to you, you don't have to go look for it. It will come. You see, what God has for you may not come to you when you want it to come. It may not come today. It may not come next week or next month or even this year. But just know and believe this one thing, that what God has for you, it is for you. And it will come to you in God's own time. But let me say this. To receive what God has for you, you have to be in the position to receive what God has for you. Now, let me say this again. To receive what God has for you, you must be in the position to receive what God has for you. And to put yourself in the position to receive what God has for you, you ought to read and do what Psalm 37 verse 5 says. Now, everybody turn quickly with me to Psalm 37 and verses 3 and 5, 3 through 5. Now, keep your finger on 1 Samuel uh, 16. But go quickly with me to Psalm 37, verses 3, 4, and 5. And it says, trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to give you time to look for that. Psalm 37, verses 3 through 5. Listen closely to what the Lord has to say to us this morning. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and rarely thou shalt be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Yes, what God has for you, it is for you. Now, let's go back to the passage of scriptures in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And in this passage, we see the little boy, David, receiving what God had for him. And that is the anointing to be the next king of Israel. To be the next king of Israel after King Saul. Now at this time in this passage of scripture, if you would read 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, King Saul had been rejected by God to continue as king over Israel because of his willful disobedience. He had disobeyed God once too many. So God sends the prophet Samuel to Bethlehem to make a sacrifice to the Lord and to select and to anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be the next king of Israel. Now the reason why David uh, received the anointing to be the next king of Israel was because his heart was right with God. And let me, uh, let me say this this morning. That is a good lesson to learn. He became the next king of Israel 
because his heart was right with God. And that lesson is that if you want to receive what God has for you, you must make sure that your heart is right with God. You to you, let me say this: to have your heart right with God, the Lord must be the center and the head of your life. You must be one who trusts and obeys the Lord. You must be one who worships and serves the Lord with all of your heart and with sincerity. But David, David almost missed out on the anointing to be the next king of Israel because of what his daddy Jesse had done. You see, when Jesse received word uh, from the prophet Samuel that he was coming to Bethlehem uh, to anoint one of his sons to be the next king of Israel, Jesse takes all of his sons to meet Samuel with hopes uh, that one of them would be chosen and anointed to be the next king of Israel, one of his sons. Jesse took all of his sons except one to meet Samuel. The one son that Jesse left behind was David. Now, when Samuel arrived in Bethlehem uh, to meet Jesse and his sons, Jesse had all his favorite seven sons to pass by Samuel. He had them lined up and told them to pass in front of Samuel, thinking that one of them would be anointed the next king of Israel. Now, he has the first son, Eliab to pass by Samuel. And Samuel almost anointed Eliab, the first son he saw because he looked handsome. He looked tall. He looked muscular. He had broad shoulders. He had a clean haircut. He was dressed in a sharp suit and he looked physically fit. Eliab, the oldest son, Looked like he had the potential to be a good king. But the Lord intervened and told Samuel, no, because God told him. He told Samuel, no, that's not the one. And then he goes on to say, look not on their countenance nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For man looketh at the outer appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Man looks out on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And then, Jesse has the second son, Abinadab, to pass by Samuel to be anointed the next king of Israel. But once again, the Lord tells Samuel, no. Then Jesse has his third son, Shammah, to pass by Samuel to be anointed the next king of Israel. But again, the Lord says no. Jesse has all of his seven sons to pass by Samuel to be anointed the next king of Israel. And each time they pass by Samuel, the Lord says no. All of his sons, all of his seven sons, they looked handsome. All of Jesse's sons looked clean cut. All of Jesse's sons were dressed sharp and all of Jesse's sons looked physically fit. All of them looked like they had the potential to be the next king of Israel. 
But as they all pass by Samuel to be anointed, the Lord keeps saying to Samuel, no. Why? Why does the Lord reject all of them? They look physically fit. They look like they have the potential to become great kings. So why does God reject them? Why does God continually to continues to say no? Because their heart was not right with God. They had all of the outer appearance going for them, but their heart was not right with God. They were men who did not have the Lord as the center and head of their life. They were men who did not worship or serve the Lord with all of their heart. Even though they were with Samuel to make a sacrifice to the Lord, but their heart was still right, still not right with God. Or we can say it like this. Even though Jesse's sons were in church, their heart was not right with God. Let me say that again. Even though we can use this analogy, we can use this example. Even though Jesse's sons, all seven of them, were in church, their heart was not right with God. You see, you've heard me say this many times before. Because you come to church does not mean anything. The only thing that that means is that you came to church. That's it. You see, these men's heart was not right with God. You see, you can have everything going for you. You might be someone who has great talent. You might be someone who has a good personality. You might be ever so fine and ever so pretty. But you might be someone who is popular with the crowd. But if your heart is not right with God, everyone may say yes to you, but God will say no. That is why the psalmist says in Psalm 139, Verses 23 and 24. Go quickly with me. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. You see, while Samuel wanted to say yes to the sons of Jesse. They all looked good. They all looked like they had the good qualifications. And even though Samuel wanted to say yes, God said no because their heart was not right with God. But if you want your heart with God, you need to give your heart to Jesus Christ because he is able to make your heart right with God. So Samuel, he runs out, out of sons. So he asked Jesse, does he have any, any other sons? He said, I've looked through all the ones you have here, all seven of them. And they look like they got potential, but God keeps saying no. So he asked Jesse, do you have any others? 
And Jesse says, yes. He says, I have another son who is the youngest out of all of my sons. And he is a shepherd boy. In other words, what Jesse was trying to convey, what he was trying to tell Samuel is, Samuel, hallelujah, what Jesse was trying to, t was telling Samuel was that by age, David is the youngest son in the family, according to age. But in his eyesight, in Jesse's point of view, he was the least and the smallest in the family. In other words, what Jesse was telling Samuel that David was not worth looking at. That's what Jesse was trying to tell Samuel. I, I didn't bring him because he's the youngest. He's the smallest. He's a shepherd boy. He, he's not even worth you looking at. He, know, he wasn't worthy, not worth the time to deal with it. Plus, David being a shepherd boy, tending the sheep, he's going to smell bad. He's going to smell like sheep. He's not as handsome or physically fit as his brother's. The only thing he is good at is playing the harp and tending the sheep. You see, Jesse did not want David around, nor did he bring David along with his brothers to meet Samuel because he wanted David to be out of sight and out of mind. And that is cold that is cold when your own daddy doesn't think much about you in a loving way and some of you have experienced that some of you that are listening to the sound of my voice you know that feeling it is cold when your friends want you out of sight and out of mind when they tell you you're worthless, you're a mistake, I should have never had you. When your mother tells you, I should have aborted you. You see, that's cold. When they say, don't say you're my child. Don't say you're my son or that you're my daughter. But this morning, I want you to know and believe this one thing. No matter how bad people talk about you, no matter how bad people lie on you, no matter how bad people may ignore or overlook you, no matter how bad people ridicule you, no matter how bad you are treated, Just know and believe this one thing. What God has for you, it is for you. And I want you to notice what Samuel tells Jesse. When he tells him, when he tells him that he has one son left that he had not seen. Samuel says, send and fetch him. For we will not sit down until he comes here. Now, there is a lesson that we can learn right here. And the lesson is that what God has for you, you don't always have to look for it. Hallelujah. I need somebody to write that down. The lesson here is that what God has for you, you don't always have to go look for it. God will send you that husband. God will send you that wife. God will send your children. 
God will bring that blessing to you. You don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to search high and low for it. It will come to you. And when you think about it, David wasn't even looking. He was happy where he was. David wasn't even looking to be anointed to be the next king of Israel. He was minding his own business, watching his little chief. He, his mind was not on, oh, I'm going to be the next king. His, his mind was not on all of those things. His mind was concentrated and focusing on what was at hand right now. He was minding his own business, watching his sheep. And let me say, that is usually, that is when you get what God has for you. That is, you will find yourself blessed when you take care of your own business. Doing that, doing that thing that God has called you to do. And not worrying about what somebody else is doing. You worry about yourself. You worry about doing what God has called you to do. God will give you the rest. God will give you the desires of your heart. God will give you what you need. You concentrate on what God has called you to do. Notice, I want you to notice that Samuel said, we will not sit down until David shows up. You see, there are some things that are waiting for your arrival. Let me say that again. There are some things, there are some blessings, there are some people, there are some windows and doors that are going to be open for you and they are waiting for your arrival. Samuel said, we're not going to sit down until David gets here. You see, the thing that God has for you, it is waiting for your arrival. <laughs> Woo! What God has for you, it is waiting for your arrival. That job that God has for you is waiting for your arrival. That house that God has for you, it is waiting for your arrival. That husband or wife that God has for you, it is waiting for your arrival. What God has planned for you, what God has for you, it cannot take place until God brings you there. And what God has planned for you, what God has for you, nobody, nobody, nobody can take it from you. Nobody can steal it from you. Nobody can cheat you out of it. You may not be where God wants uh, you to be right now. Just know God, oh, oh, praise the Lord. Let me say this again. You may not be where God wants you to be right now. You may not be there yet. But just know God will hold and maintain what he has for you. It's yours. You may not be in that position. You may not be there, but it's waiting on you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In other words, be, before God gives you what he has for you, he will prepare you for it. Yes, he will. He will prepare it for you. He trains you for it. You see, while David was out in the field attending his sheep, God was secretly preparing, preparing David to be the next king of Israel. 
And likewise, God is preparing you to receive what God has for you. And the scripture says that they sent for David and brought him before Samuel. And the scripture says that David was ruddy, meaning that he had fair skin with bright eyes and good looking. And when David appeared before Samuel, the Lord said, Arise, hallelujah, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. When God has given you what he has for you, he will anoint you and give you the Holy Spirit so you will be able to handle what he has for you. He gives you the understanding to handle what he has for you. He will give you the wisdom to handle what he has for you. He will give you the power to handle what he has for you. The question is, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? You see, when you repent, when you repent of your sins and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, God will give you the Holy Spirit. He will give you the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He will give you the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when you are given the Holy Spirit, you need to walk by the Spirit. You need to live by the Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be led by the Spirit. You need to be strengthened by the Spirit. Now, to be, to worship in the Spirit, to love in the Spirit, to be led in the Spirit, and to be fervent in the Spirit, you must first be born of the Spirit. In John chapter 3 and verse 3, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then Christ also says in John chapter 3, verses 5 through 7, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit and spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said to you, you must be born again. Now the question this morning as we finish is how does one become born of the Spirit? It is by believing and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You see, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. We must accept the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, if you are listening to the sound of my voice, and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Or perhaps you are listening and have backslid. Things have happened in life and you've gone back to some of your old ways. I want you to hear this morning that what God has for you, it is for you. Maybe you've departed. Maybe you're not where you should be. But he's waiting for you. He's waiting for your arrival. Because he's got a blessing for you. He's got a promise that he's going to keep with you. 
this morning. This morning is the right time for you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Samuel said, we're not going to sit down until David arrives. And God is saying, we're not doing anything until Joel, Johnny, uh, until they arrive. God is waiting for you. Listen, beloved. Listen, my brother and sister. God is waiting for you. And what God has for you, it is for you. And no demon, no person, nothing can take it away from you. It is for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning for your help. Someone this morning, Father, wants to accept you in their heart. They want to make you their Lord and Savior. Father, you said in Romans that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And Father, today, touch that individual as they come humbly before you and they say, enter into my heart. I'm tired of living this way. I recognize that I am a sinner. Father, touch them. Take away all of those things that should not be there and make them the person that you want. Position them to be anointed today. Father, we ask you for that one that has known you but has backslidden. It's gone back to the things of the world, gone back to some of their old ways. Father, you said you were married to the backslide. This morning, Father, position them, change them, transform them, make them new. We know that you are standing just like that father of the prodigal son that stood there with arms wide open, ready to receive his child. Father, today we fall into your arms. Forgive us. Forgive us of our sins. We are not worthy to be called your children. But Father, man looks at the outside and says that's not even worth God's time. I don't see a preacher from that one. I don't see a woman of God from that street walker. I don't see a child of God from that alcoholic, that drug addict. But you look at the heart. You look at that heart that is humble and contrite, that has repented. And Father, today, we thank you. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for your word. We thank you for everything that you have done. And Father, today, Father, I just ask that you bring your children home. That you bless them. And we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, if you have been listening to this program this morning and you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then I want to advise you to find yourself a good Bible-believing church and start going. Find yourself a church that the Spirit of God is there. And start going. And I want to invite you, if you are 
in the Dell Valley, Austin, Bastrop, Elgin, Manor area, and you don't have a home church, and you're looking for a church, you say, where can I go, Pastor? Well, I invite you to come and visit us. We would love to have you. Come and be with us. Be with us this weekend, Friday at 7 and Saturday at 7 p.m. under the great big gospel tent, and then Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and then Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. We invite you to come. Come and hear the word of the Lord. Well, God bless you. God bless you. May you have a blessed and beautiful Tuesday. Don't forget to join us tomorrow morning. Join us tomorrow morning as we continue to study the word of the Lord. Now, as we leave this morning, I want to remind everyone, listen closely. When God is near, there is no need, no need to fear. Have a blessed and beautiful day. God bless you.